but Ian from RHC, James from Lathwaite, Magath from Braze, and then uh, Matt, you're representing Haley, aren't you? So to zoom off. Yeah, this is 100% pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But uh, it makes me very proud actually to work for CACI today, see our great partners, but also see the projects that our clients are delivering in their businesses because they're projects that aren't just infrastructure projects, they're projects that are making a real difference to their numbers and outcomes. And uh, you know, I'm really pleased to have heard from you both today. Um, Ian, perhaps we start with you because your story is the freshest. Uh, if you were to repeat this process over again, is there anything you would have changed looking back at it now or done differently? It's a good question. And um, there are things that obviously went very well. I was saying at the end, we finished on time and to budget, but there were things that went wrong on that way. And I think the speed in which you can acknowledge that things are coming off the rails and being able to react in a timely manner, you know, there were some decisions where our, our B2B solution in the end was delivered separately from the consumer. I think the sooner we'd recognize that, probably would have secured some of the delivery and removed some of the stress that, that there was there in the middle. I mean, ultimately we delivered on time, but you know, being able to recognize those things and being able to react quickly is um, you know, something we probably could have improved on. Yeah, it's always good to deliver on time, but it's nice yeah. to do that in a stress-free <laughs> way as well. James, obviously Lathwaite is, is on a journey as well, yeah. um, similar in some ways to RSC, different in others as well. What, what about yourself, same question, what would you look back on now and, and change in this, this journey you're going through? trying not to do it when uh, a global pandemic meant that wine was probably <laughs> more popular than oxygen and trying to get it and trying to get the stuff into the country was not impossible yeah. but cha changing that uh, I think for the project we had we we had the transformation project which was the tech the contact strategy and the segmentation in terms of the segmentation piece which is what I talked about I think the biggest thing I would change is actually really helping the business understand how to use it I think since we've we've uh, shared it with the business, there's been a couple of instances where people have some slightly run off and taken a couple of the scenarios that we've talked about a bit too literally. Right. Okay. Uh, and it's it's about empowering the business to use the segmentation in the way it is meant to, as opposed to here you go, off off you go and, and run with it. In yeah. terms of uh, in terms of the project that we had uh, getting Adobe in, very similar project. The one thing we'd probably do again. Uh, was how we designed the data model. We tried to do it over teams. And if there was one meeting in the whole of the last 24 months that needed to be face-to-face, -face, it was getting in a room, doing the data model yeah. with everybody around and trying to get you know, that traditional post-it note scenario going. It just it became quite problematic over a remote nature. But I suppose that was COVID for everybody. Yeah, it's very impressive to have achieved this during the pandemic. Yeah, and I, I suppose I want to back up what Ian said. You know, we delivered the project with CACI uh, over 12 months. It was only a couple of weeks behind its original deadline. And, mm. you know, a project that was over 12 months, I, I think that was outstanding in, well, in the times we were living in. Yeah, testament to the teams on both sides, absolutely. Um, Ian, just coming back to that point James made about people grabbing the segmentation, not using them as they were intended. Now you've got this new infrastructure, are there people getting carried away with what, what it can do and you're having to manage and prioritise constant new requests of, oh, can we do this now? Yeah, <laughs> inevitably, yes. Yeah. Um, that there is a, an insatiable appetite at the RAC to improve the way we work. And uh, bearing in mind, when you're going through the campaign migration in a project like this, we went through a change freeze process where we said there's no new campaigns coming in because we've just got to get this migrated. We've got to get it across the line. Once you've got it across the line, you've then got this big backlog to work through. Uh, so prioritisation is really key in those things. You know, yes, there are some great ideas. We've got this new technology. We want to take advantage of it. But you've got to come back to those business cases on everything. You know, if someone just wants an email going out the door, that's fine. But if it's promoting something that's not really worth us doing, how do you weigh that up? And uh, putting that structure and allows you to focus that, uh, what you need to be doing next in terms of technology. And um, that, that's been key. I enjoyed what you're saying in the presentation about having empowered project leaders who can make decisions without having to go back up the business either. And if you've got the framework to make those decisions, it all, be, all of a sudden becomes easier. Um, and that, that's Hugely so, yeah. yeah. Matt, I'm going to go to you next, actually. So we talked about some technology transformation and, and finding new audiences, etc. What role does creativity uh, play in, in kind of CRM transformation and, and moving a business forward? 
So uh, I think from I mean, creativity, you know, the idea of well, ideation is, is something that should maybe be uh, present throughout the whole process. Right? When you're looking at data sets, you want to think about how that data is going to be used at the end of it when you're at the sharp end and you're creating an asset, and whether it's an email, push notification, whatever it might be, that's going to land in someone's inbox. So I think the, from a creative perspective, so that asset production, I, I felt a little bit like, you know, for a while that was being left behind because we've got these, this fantastic rich data set that each of our clients and, and Haley have got. And how do we bring that into creative? Not, not just, again, first names and subject lines or in body copy, but actually in those creative assets. So I, think, I think there's been a step change in, in more people using uh, the software like Move Blink, the, 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 the full potential of things like Braze to be able to bring that out. But creati creativity as a, as a strategy, I think, should, should be across all things because... Um, the consulting team, when they're putting together a strategy, the, the, the ops team, when they're building the, the, the workflows and the campaigns, it should be in everything we do so that we're really humanising the, the messaging that we're putting out to people. Yeah. You, you gestured toward Magath now. And um, Magath, Chief Evangelist at Braze. Chief Evangelist. What a job title. Yeah. I, I always ask myself that question, what a crazy job. Yeah. I mean, if you were me, how would you, how would you, secure, sorry, how would you secure that job title from me? I mean, let's, <laughs> let's, let's have a drink today. And I mean, we always look for new people. Yeah. I'd okay. Say. Oh, no, no, I don't want a job <laughs> break. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> nothing, I'm, I'm staying where I am, Tracy. Um, Jesus. <laughs> right. Maggie, on to other questions. <laughs> Uh, what trends are you seeing with Braze customers at the moment that yeah. you think are useful to draw out and, and share with this audience? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, the, the first thing, of course, we talked uh, a lot of data today and uh, leveraging. When we see exceptional brands, they leverage data for smart segmentation. But also, you know, one of the things that I believe that haven't touched upon today is that, you know, predictive purchases and predictive chain. You know, of course, as a brand, you really want to understand at an earlier stage, you know, which are the consumers are likely to churn so that you can target them with the relevant messages, right? When you talk about technology, you wanted to also make use of the artificial intelligence that's available today, that you are not sending messages to people who are not going to respond at all. So rather, you wanted to send those messages whom you can convert. And of course, everybody knows retaining consumers is a lot cheaper than acquiring a new one. And the, the second one is, of course, um, a cross-channel customer engagement. And at Braze, like I mentioned before, oftentimes we say, you know, start anywhere and go everywhere. There are companies, you know, who come to us starting with one channel, but then bringing in all the other channels into the mix as well. You know, one of the examples is that Money Supermarket, yep. when, they came to Mar when they came to Braze, they were predominantly only email. Email, right, and then they, when they started to move along with uh, cross-channel customer engagement, they have seen 25% in uh, 25% increase in conversion for one of the campaigns around car insurance, and I think that's a massive result, right? And the last point that I would make is um, we touched upon a bit today, which is sometimes we just don't know what works and what doesn't, right? So developing the culture and mindset inside the company, which enables your employees to constantly experiment and also test test, 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 because yeah. that gives you more insights than anything else, right? So we see exceptional brands, even when their campaign is more successful, they would never give up on experimentation and testing, David. And, and this is largely where the creative work we're now doing with Domino's has come from, this idea that we need to be testing constantly, but to test constantly, you need fresh creative assets to feed into that machine. Uh, and when we as a team were planning this event and, and trying to get together on ideas and whether we focus in on one topic, we thought we need to talk about all of the layers that come in when it comes to activating data into channel. That's building the data in its first instance, so it's in, in the right shape, connecting that to marketing technology and getting that marketing technology set up well, and then having creative assets and processes that feed that engine and, and can make it work. And, and that's what drives business results. And, and that, that's the message. Sorry about this side of the room. You've got my back. Um, yeah, that's what uh, we've tried to do today and, and communicate in the case studies we've looked at. Next question. Mm. Um, when we think about the, the business change you've driven, there was, there was a point in John and David's presentation earlier that talked about making friends with IT. So probably a question for James and Ian together, which is around managing stakeholders and getting everybody on board with this vision you have, this I have a dream moment. <laughs> um, how, how did you go about getting everyone into the, onto the same page? It, it started off with... Um just having an, an engaging conversation with them. And uh, it wasn't specific to this project, if I'm honest. Uh, in my role, 
I need to work closely with IT all the time. And it, it, whether that is to do with InfoSec or whether that's to do with the architects and what technology we want to use, we need to be joined up. Mm. Uh, uh, there are uh, operations use cases that want to send messages to customers, but actually I'm representing marketing, should I be involved? There needs to be an open door there. And uh, you know, I kind of encourage anyone here to say, actually, have that open relationship. And uh, I have regular conversations with our CTO saying, actually, this is something that's happening in the MarTech at the moment. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Uh, I was talking about two-way messaging with him the other day. We're working with two providers at the moment, IMI Mobile and uh, Live Person, who both have that capability. But who should we look to use for our RCS messaging? Just having that open debate. And they came to the table and said, Snowflake looks really good. And I was like, I don't know a lot about it, to be honest. But if you're saying it's really good, happy to you know, adopt yeah, okay. that. However, on the, our side of the table, where we're saying, actually, we need something in the campaigns team, we want Adobe, it was a bit of give and take. You know? yeah. We could have said, we've chosen CACI because they're giving us Adobe, and they said we should use Redshift. Then we could have, it could have caused a lot of friction, but being able to work collaboratively with them and having that relationship, we said, OK, what are the pros and cons? Working with them. It's just having that personal relationship. Yeah. Um, okay. That makes it easier to get people on board. Now, there might be people in the room who work within a company at the moment where there is tension that, that obviously doesn't exist within the REC. Would there be an advice you'd give? I mean, you've talked there about regular communication, yeah. that kind of thing. It takes time, and you've got to have that desire yourself. Uh, it's not easy because. It can be chalk and cheese trying to have the conversations with those uh, that, that people with that mindset, maybe. Mm. Um, but it is an important thing to make the effort and uh, to be recognised. And I, I guess what's possibly unique in the RAC, or maybe not unique, but, but what was beneficial in the RAC was that I came from a background where I used to build single customer view databases. I was very technical myself. And therefore, to have a conversation with those people was I was a good fit, having a role where someone's responsibility is that, that glue between the tech and the marketing yeah. means actually that's my job to do that. Yeah. Therefore, it works and it becomes natural, where if you've got two very distinct divisions that never talk, who's going to put, how, how it, you know, you've got to put, do something to make yeah. it work. And uh, yeah, we're fortunate enough that there was a role and it happened to be mine that, that, that plays that role throughout the project, but continues today. Mm -hmm. James, when we, we first met, we, um, you were fairly new in at uh, Lathwaite's when you yeah. came in, and you came in directly with a transformation mindset of what you wanted to get done in the business. Yes. And uh, I remember those early conversations, you were very focused on that. Yes. How, how did you bring everyone with you on that journey? I suppose I, I did benefit from the fact that I was brought in with that remit. Yeah. I, I, the, the business Lathwaite's knew it knew it needed to change from where it was and how it was running, very similar with an outsourced SQL provider that you, you, know, you couldn't hack into, get, your, get to your own data. Uh, they knew they needed to change, they just didn't know how. Uh, and so it was very clear that that was my role, uh, which is great, but then you have to go through the process of explaining what it all, all means. Uh, Ian's point about being able to talk to the IT team in a way that I think no other marketeer previously in Lathwaite had been able to talk to them about you know, a single customer view, structures of data, data tables, you know, just the technology, but also the lingo, allows you to, to build a relationship with them, which meant that when you were talking about a CRM platform and uh, you know, web targeting, yeah. they're able to say, okay, well, they know what they're talking about. Having a partner that knew what they're talking about was also helpful as well. Uh, so getting that kind of relationship with uh, the chief technology or the chief information officer at Lathwaite was critical. Uh, he was a very important stakeholder in bringing along some of the uh, some of the more nervous members of the board. So the the, the Lathwaite family are still in essence the board, yeah. and so some of them were a little bit uh, you know, not reticent, but don't necessarily understand the technology. They they make wine after all. <laughs> so uh, it was a case of okay, what's all this? And he brought brought them along on the journey, which was brilliant. Almost a man on the inside. Uh, for the segmentation that we had, uh, I found that the plan we had to bring stakeholders on that journey was somewhat binary. It was either going to be brilliant or disastrous. We took the initial uh, driving dimensions that Sophie and the team uh, presented to us, which was the things that made our segments drive apart and made them uh, 
important to, to customers, or made them important for customers. Uh, and the initial seven segments that didn't have names, didn't really have any data behind them, and I put them in front of Tony Lathwaite and sat down and said, these are your customers, and did it with him and the CEO. And at the end of the session, he said, I recognise all of these people, which was kind of a very high-risk strategy, but it yeah. did work because from then on, uh, it was the, the segmentation endorsed by Tony, which kind, of, kind of helped. Uh, but it could have all gone so very differently. And yeah. sometimes you just have to go with it and, and make those decisions to put it, you know, if you believe in it, put it in front of, uh, of the people that will make it happen. Great, that's, um, that's a great kind of message to, to pull out of today, actually. What, what I've picked up from both your answers as well is you've both played a role in bridging the technical conversation and the marketing conversation. I think that's an important part yeah. for, for us to play in our, our businesses. I think some of, the, you know, some of the traditional IT teams have a perception that marketeers are you know, make press ads and do 30-second TV and that's about it. Uh, having the ability to have that proper conversation with them about the things that they care about and the things that will make their lives harder or easier uh, means that they give you a fair amount of, re- of leeway. Yeah, yeah. What would, what, have, what would have been the worst outcome with Tony then if you'd presented the segments? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Him turning around and saying, I recognise none of these people. Who are these people? I've, he, you know, he went so far as to say he thinks he's met most of the customers at events we've had, Good, okay. except for one of the segments we, uh, we uh, understood was being very, very price conscious and basically a Black Friday shopper. Right. Okay. Uh, and, and so oh, I don't think I've met any of those. And that's, that's quite good because we're... We're going to park them because they're not good in terms of margin. So yeah, okay. uh, the rest of them, the, the, the three core cool ones, he recognises, which That's is good. good. That's good, good, good. Well, if you'd lost your job, Magath's got a job going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I call out like, like like uh, evangelist. Yeah, I'm, uh, a, I'm a wine evangelist. Uh, uh, David, I, w- I wasn't planning to stay for the networking, but now I'm definitely going to stay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make money, some money out of referrals today. Yeah. Uh, Matt. Now, let's, let's talk about the creative bridge then. This isn't the question I got prepared, but I think it leads in quite nicely. So, yeah, good luck on your notes you've got ready. Um, <laughs> do you think there is a role for creativity to play in terms of bridging what the above-the-line agencies are doing and what CRM and technical teams want to achieve in terms of creative execution of campaigns? Does that question make sense? It's lots of words. Let's go for it, shall we? <laughs> Pregnant pause, I'll take my glasses off, think about what I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, of course there is. I think um, the, 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 where we're at the minute with, with Domino's is that we are working with an above-the-line agency, and that's uh, a key partnership for us, agency to agency. And obviously, the, the client is the one who's in charge of all of us, you know, and we're also there to work together to uh, the common goal of, of making not only them as a customer, but their customers relate and engage with them as a brand. So I think it's really important to have those conversations, but also to recognise where the specialisms exist and to get the right people in to do the right jobs, but just to make sure that there's a, a coherent and a fluent conversation. Yeah, OK, so joining up with, with making that conversation happen. Yeah. Uh, and where do you see things heading in terms of this mix between creative asset development and technology? You've obviously shown some examples today what's, what's, what's possible in, in modern MarTech. Do you see this moving forward and changing in any way? So, I, I mean, in terms of, you know, the, the, the next big piece of tech or anything like that, I think we're, we're, we're kind of there for the minute. I think people have got to learn to start using it to its fullest capabilities. And look, there's lots of, th- lots of barriers to that. And I'm not trying to sit here to pontificate and say that you should be doing it. It'd be cool if you were. But we, I know there's, there's, a, there's a resource and a time issue to that. But hopefully you can see that all of these, this tech that is out there and the potential that you have is available to you just to start making some of those quick wins and those incremental uh, successes that really start to build up a bigger, a bigger picture to, to, to go for the big, you know, the 18-month goal. Uh, and, and knowing some of the brands that are here today, it doesn't take much of a change in CRM performance to generate qu- quite significant returns. Into one program, at least, can really make a difference. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I said so. You know, the, the, the bit that lands in people's inboxes is, or, or mm, time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's is. It's my bread and butter, and so it's the thing I'm really passionate about. But actually, working at an, a data agency like CACI opens, it's almost like a toy box, really, being opened. Because for me, that's the, that's the next level. 
it's not the next piece of tech, it's not necessarily AI, although that's going to be, I think, something that really does start to come in over the next um, year, two years maybe, but it's, it's being able to utilize that data set in the creative assets that we produce that's really quite exciting, because I don't think that's something we've really done enough of in the last few years. Yeah. Magath, final question really, because the wine alarm will be going off soon. Four yes. hours late, but it'll be going off. Um, <laughs> With all, with, essentially, Braze is a marketing technology company. It's, it's a piece of tech. If when we're in these roles where we're, we're doing stuff with technology, we're writing SQL to access data, we're integrating different sources together, and all of that stuff we're doing and managing projects, how do we hold on to that human essence that, that's really important in marketing? How do we, we keep that yeah, front of mind? Yeah, absolutely, David. Three things come to my mind, right? So number one, um, you know, keep your customers at the heart of everything you do, meaning from the very beginning of the customer onboarding journey, try and get the consent from the users, right? And that is your opportunity to build trust and transparency with your consumers. And that is really key in establishing that humanized customer experience. And also we have seen the data before, you know, speak to your consumers as like a regular person would understand what matters to them and engage with their convenience times, number one. And number two, consumer behavior and preferences always changes, right? And as a brand, you need to capture those changing preferences. And I will give you an example. Uh, I will give you two examples, David. So the number one is the, the QSR that we talked about, right? I love a pepperoni pizza, but I could be vegan tomorrow. But if you're going to keep on targeting me with those meat products, you're going to lose me as a brand, right? So number two, you know, if you're in the business of you know music and streaming, you know, I'm someone who loves to watch those crazy criminal TV series, right? Like for example, Dexter and Breaking Bad and the Narcos. Do I want to watch La La Land movie? No, I do not, right? But at the same time, I want to have kids, right? When I have kids, I probably start watching Frozen. Right? But as a brand, are you moving along with me in that journey that I take with you as a brand? Right? I mean, that is really key. It's not one-time engagement. It's about building that lifetime value with your consumers. And that's point number two. And the last one is that the people and the technology and wonderful partner like you, David, you know, who brings. I, uh, please give me. You're getting the wine anyway. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I mean, please also give me the 200 euro, like we talked about, right? <laughs> and, and you know, wonderful partner like you who bring these companies together, you know, which we can actually help to create that brilliant humanized customer experience, as David. Yeah, so it's a good point. I um, I once bought a Justin Bieber album off Amazon, and they've not let me forget it. <laughs> not let me forget it. So uh, yeah, I might just have to buy it so they stop marketing it to me. Anyway, uh, we are at time. We would love to have had the chance to do questions from all of you today, but we wanted to pack this agenda full, so we've not really had time between speakers to, um, to do that. But I recommend uh, you catch each of our panelists during the networking that we'll now have out in the, the, the lobby area uh, and uh, post to them your individual questions or connect on LinkedIn with them. Sure, you won't refuse anyone? No, that's fine. Very good. <laughs> Open doors. So uh, thank you, everyone, for attending today, and thank you to the panelists. If I can get a round of applause.